So, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to move uh, to our next uh, session and we will continue working on the or digging a bit deeper into the uh, legal process because we're going to see how we can go from regulation to actual knowledge and to uh, hear about that uh, that's a slide from one point to the other. Um, we're going to uh, invite Veronika Heimsbach to take the floor. She's manager, AI engineer, SME Semantic Technologies, Insights and Data at Capgemini. Good afternoon, Veronika. Good afternoon. Thank your, you for having me. Your image is very, very blurred. Is it? Yes, unfortunately. Uh, we can read what's on your sweatshirt, but we cannot see your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. Enough. Yes, that's much sharper. Thank you very much. Th that's better. Um, yeah, it, it actually depends on where you sit. That's it. But now it's it's definitely better. So over to you. Thank you. And thank you so much for that nice introduction. And thank you for having me. So today I'm to take you on the road from regulation to knowledge and showing you a project we have done at Capgemini for the Norwegian Maritime Authorities here in Norway. So, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about our client, the Norwegian Maritime Authority, and the problem we were going to solve for them. So, they were looking for a replacement for their supervision vision system at the NMA, as I'm going to call them in this presentation. And as a part of that uh, project, we were going to also automate the issuing of personal certificates for sailors in a machine readable link data reflecting current and historic regulations. We were also going to implement tools for enrichment of regulatory requirements as not all data were found in the regulation documents themselves. And of course, an important point is that domain experts must be able to maintain the knowledge and the metadata themselves when us consultants are gone from the project. So let us begin with the data sources in this road from regulation to, to knowledge. The NMA holds and maintains approximately 200 regulations uh, in Norwegian and additional sources is SQL databases, spreadsheets, expert knowledge that are found in people's heads and also a specification called the SFI. So we started out uh, grasping this manually. So we took a regulation and we saw how we could model this uh, in RDF. Uh, in a manual process. But we quickly discovered that when you're doing modeling manually from document to graph, we saw that there is a huge potential of missing out of important information as you get tired along the way. And me, modeling data, and not an expert in the maritime domain, might misunderstand and misinterpret a lot of important information. So we proposed a hypothesis for the NMA, that it's faster to identify context, concepts and relationships in regulation using natural language processing instead of human eyes. And luckily we had two <laughs> equally valid outcomes of that hypothesis, either it's faster or it's not. So we started drafting a proof of concept around this and after approximately 2000 uh, working hours, we were able to successfully get a result that we could bring from a proof of concept stage onto a project state. So right now, the pipeline running in production for this graph transformation from regulation to knowledge looks like this. So we have a text service where we break down the regulation itself into plain text and we can extract any part of a regulation from the text service using HTTP post requests. And then we pass the plain text onto a NLP module that consists of spacey pattern matching rules that identifies the 
keywords in the text we're looking for and also the context around these keywords. And these keywords are pretty much the so-called legal scopes or characteristics connected to a regulatory requirement. The findings from the NLP module, we pass on to RDF transformation that's implemented in Java with RDF for J. And the finished graph is passed on to our graph database of choice, which is top rate edge in this um, project. In addition to this automated pipeline, we have enrichment services for the domain experts to use, which is a web service with a form where inspectors of vessels can fill in their criteria for inspecting vessels on different kinds of regulatory requirements. In addition to the form, we also have a lot of um, code systems described in Excel spreadsheets, and for that part, we use Otter to serialize RDF and pass into top rate edge directly. On the top here, we have a controller service, which pretty much just managed uh, the communication between these microservices. And here you can see an example of a regulatory requirement and how we chose to model them. And as you see, the main language we chose for modeling regulatory requirements is Shackle. And the main reason for that is that Shackle doesn't allow for incomplete knowledge and there is closed world assumption for data, which we believe it's more natural and closer to the domain of law than traditional ontology modeling. So every single requirement is a node shape where all these legal scopes or characteristics to the requirement are linked through the property resource with different kinds of property shapes. And Shackle being a quite verbose vocabulary, we are able to describe the different legal scopes in great detail using the Shackle constraints. And please bear in mind that we're not using the validation aspects of Shackle for this particular case. We're only using it to describe the regulatory requirements. The enrichment done in Otter is a manual process. We haven't uh, spent time on automating that much because it's mainly one-time jobs. But here we have we need to have a close cooperation between domain experts and ontologists. So an ontologist would create a template for serialization and the domain expert will populate that template with data. And then we serialize the spreadsheet to RDF using the Lutra implementation of Otter. So our final knowledge graphs consists of a T-box and an A-box, of course, and the T-box consists of vessel types, trade areas, education, institutions, and different kinds of educations, general concepts, and the SFI classification system. While the data graph consists of these regulatory requirements modeled in Shackle, but not for validation purposes, but for descriptive purposes. And then we have personal certificates, which are very detailed model in Shackle to every single part of the regulation. And that we use for validation purposes in order to issue, automate the issuing of per personal certificates. So we gather instance data about the person that applies for a certificate and compare that instance data to the rules in, in Shackle, and then can give a yes or no. And if there is a no, you get a complete result of what is missing in order to achieve the certificate. Um, we have several different external vocabularies that we use to describe our data, and unit is perhaps the most used one, uh, of ex uh, apart from the semantic web stack. And we have also created several internal vocabularies to, to distinguish our data. Data governance is important for the NMA, and we chose to operate uh, as a tool for that because of their form view for browsing resources and also the workflow way of working. So we can have complete control of the ontology lifecycle management. And it also provides statics, versioning, and graph history that is beneficial for our client. 
And we, as knowledge graph engineers, facilitate for governance through putting Top Red Edge in a dev test prod environment that's run, that runs on Azure, the NMA's internal Azure uh, environment. And we are property grouping the different kinds of legal scopes and characteristics, making it easier for the domain expert to navigate in the graph. And we also created a thorough Sparkle library, including production-ready um, queries for the backend applications to extract data and use for their different purposes and use cases, answering competency questions, and also nice to have queries that domain experts can use to extract smaller scopes of the graph to answer their questions. Some challenges we met along the way was, of course, maintenance of the code base. And that's a challenge in many projects where uh, the consultant suddenly <laughs> goes away from the project and it's left to the client to maintain the code base in the future. Because if there were to be new legal scopes and uh, regulations in the future, that also requires some kind of implementation of a new pattern in the NLP identifier process. Another challenge we met along the way was actually the discovery of relationships through named entity recognition. That was quite hard, so we weren't able to implement that in the way that we would like. So if anyone is listening that have some insight or um, interesting research for me to read on that topic, I will be more than happy to get in touch with you. And ensuring that the NMA is comfortable in the wonders of semantic technologies is also important for their confidence to take on the project themselves when we are done with our contract. And we find top edge to be quite suitable for domain experts and therefore um, easier for them to, to navigate in that area. So some lessons learned. Close cooperation between client and domain experts and ontologists is crucial. Veronica, um, I, I'm sorry, can I ask you to sort of maybe go quickly through the lessons learned because we have received some questions and I'd like to be able to raise them with you within the time we have left. Yeah, perfect. Okay. And NLP saved us a lot of time. If we were to manually model all regulation, it would have taken us 12,000 hours. We were able to reduce that time uh, immensely using NLP. Um, Yes, and I think the next one I've talked a lot about and also the last one. So I'll leave it there. And Thank that's you. all for me. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's it's a pity not to raise the questions that we receive. Uh, and I'm sure actually your call has been heard as well. And I hope that uh, people who may be able to help you will get back to you. Um, so the first question is, how difficult can natural language processing be when the language of the regulations is usually different compared to your vernacular language? Well, um, for our case, it wasn't uh, that hard um, because uh, the way we use NLP here is is pretty much some form of fancy regular expression. We have a set of keywords, these legal scopes that we're looking for, being build date, vessel type, being trade area, and then we look for the context in the same sentence surrounding that keyword, being the date itself, being before or after, so we capture the context around the keywords. So it wasn't that much of a, a hassle really, even though we are searching in the region. And uh, what kind of language models do you use for the extraction of keywords? Are these models publicly available by any chance? Uh, well, we didn't come that far with the named entity recognition model, uh, and we haven't trained any models ourselves based on that experience we got with the near models. So what we do is we have a list of legal scopes that we go through. So this is a manual process behind the NLP module. Uh, so 
I'm sorry to disappoint you there, but we don't have any fancy models to share. Okay. And then um, the, the final question is, how long did this project take for the maritime regulator NMA? And what was the hardest part? Well, uh, the proof of concept, that took approximately 2,000 hours to complete. And after that, the project spanned for another two and a half years to, to refine and finalize the pipeline and setting up, up in our infrastructure and everything. Um, and the hardest part, yeah, what was that? Yeah, getting the, the shackle constraints for the personal certificates correct. Because because there's so many different equally valid alternatives described in the regulation and being able to model that was a brain teaser. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much for your openness on sharing this information. And uh, as I said, I hope your call's been heard. Thanks for being with us this afternoon, Veronica. And bye-bye for now.